Welcome back, guys. Okay, so um, back to significant figures. Um, so in, he, in this situation, there's uh, three significant figures, right? Now this significant figures tells you how accurate, partially tells you how accurate my measurement is, right? By saying this, that means that I measured it to the uh, hundredths decimal place of accuracy. That's different than me saying, this. These are two different uh, quantities. Even if I measure the 8.8, uh, .8, um, you know, if I go to another precision, that means I measured it more precisely over here than I did over here. So significant figures to tell you how, how precise your measurement is. That's the purpose of it. And it also uh, helps us to simplify very large numbers. Um, so I, let me share my screen. Um, and there's this nice little, um, th there's this nice little um, website from Columbia that describes it pretty well. So there's some rule there. There's uh, some rules with significant figures, right? So all non-zero numbers are significant, right? They tell you something about the quantity. So uh, when you write them down, you need you need all the all the non-zero numbers. Any zeros between two non-digit two two non non-zero digits are significant. So like thousand fifty one. Um, now, what's not significant are zeros and in certain places. So when leading, uh, so if there's leading zeros, it's not significant, you, you, whether or not there's a decimal place. So, so like this point, uh, 0 0.0023 only has two significant figures. Only the three two is significant, right? And the reason why we do, do this is so that we could do scientific notation, which we'll go into in a second. Now, uh, trailing zeros to the right after the number are significant. They tell you the accuracy, right? If I measured um, 92 millimeters, I know that I measured it very precisely within a hundredth of a, of a, a millimeter. Uh, here they wrote milliliters. It doesn't matter what measurement you do. Um, um, so the zeros after tell you how precise it is, right? So if I wrote it like this, so if I wrote it like this, that's different from this, right? Because I, I know it within this decimal place, somewhere within this decimal place, right? And then in general, your uncertainty will be the same order as, as this number, right? 0 0.05, 0 0.5, so plus or minus uh, 0 0.05, right? So that's the precision you wanna to go to with the numbers. Um, let me share my screen back. All right. So now if you don't have a trail in zero, like, uh, uh, I'm sorry, if you don't have a decimal shown, like in this case, 540, the zero in this case is not significant. It doesn't tell you the precision of it. It just tells you that it's 540 instead of 54, let's say. So th that zero in this case is not significant. Only when you have decimal places will the trailing, uh, uh, trailing numbers be um, significant. So if I put a, a decimal place 
at 540, this means that the trail in zero is significant, right? So in this case, there's three significant figures here. Right? Now, exact numbers from the mathematical world are infinitely significant figures. So when I say an idealized version of one meter or one unit length, it has an infinite, uh, it's infinitely precise, right? And we'll go into what precise is. And then um, I'm not gonna go into how to round, uh, this should, uh, you should, guys should know it, anything about, you know, if, if uh, you have some numbers past the, the significant, uh, your accuracy, your uh, uncertainty, you have to round to that uncertainty. So if I had this, I'm sorry, if I had this, I would have to round up to this decimal place, or round down, right? And at, from zero to, to four, I, I, I round down to five. If anything above five, five to nine, I round up to six, right? Um, now, the reason why we, we do this is uh, for our scientific notation, which is a simple system to uh, describe large numbers or very small numbers, right? And the way it works is that you can describe any number, like let's say 540, we can describe this by, um, by some number times a multiple of 10 or, or a power of 10. So this is equal to 5.4 times two tens, right? And then the power just tells you that these are, are two tens multiplied by each other, right? So if we times 540, um, 5.4 by 100, we get back 540, right? And this, this is a way to write down um, um, uh, very large numbers, right? So if I have 500, 5, uh, 500, uh, 5,400,000, right? I would, you know, when you're doing your calculations, you don't want to write this down. You want to simplify it for uh, time's sake. So you do this, right, to the six. And the way you, you see what number you have here is you count this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's where you put your decimal place, right? This is also equal to, you could also write it like this, right? To the five, right? I just have the decimal place over there, so it's five tens. I jump five places, right? Um, now, now you guys should uh, mostly know this. I uh, just need to go over it. Um, now, for uh, decimal places, let's say if we have. Let's say if we have this number, right? We write this as 5.4 times 10 to the negative. And now we count how many times we move. One, two, three, four, five, six. So times 10 to the negative six, right? So it's a little bit different in the fact that when you have a negative number, th this is, you put the decimal place over here, you see how it's uh, transposed, right? So we just move the decimal place the opposite way, and we get it over here. So this tells me that this is a decimal, right? Now, both of these have the same significant figures, right? There's two, right? And in scientific notation, you write out this, uh, your, your um, your um, your accuracy. So so if you have if you if there's another significant figure over here, let's say if we made it made it measured it more accurate, you could put a zero over here, and then that would become a significant figure. So you always put your significant figures in the scientific notation. Now, in terms of um, writing this using scientific notation in um, 
uh, on in computer programs and these mathematical programs or on Google itself, instead of writing times 10 to the negative six, you can just write, you just use E as times 10. So it'd be 5.4 E uh, E to the negative six. So you can write it like this, right? And this is just uh, simplification. So you'll see me writing it in both formats, uh, back and forth. And this can also be capitalized in certain circumstances, or they could be too. It depends on the program that you use or the syntax, but it's usually just small e to keep it simple. Um, on, let me get a drink of water. Okay. Now, let me share this link. It's a nice little thing to keep in mind. So any questions on this, um, on significant figures so far? Okay, that's good. Um, we'll probably run the full class today. Um, we'll, we'll go. I'll go until uh, um, maybe we'll take a, a five minute break at like one ten, and then or, or when when this uh, room ends, and then we'll can we'll finish the day. Um, all right, so back to uncertainty. Okay, so now percent uncertainty. So when I had this uncertainty, right, point zero five, right, that's the actual number that I'm off by, right? Now this number can change based on um, this actually doesn't tell us exactly how accurate this measurement is right not right off the bat right it's actually pretty accurate it's within uh 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 one percent right um based on the, the, the numbers right but um let's say if i measure um 20 meters the size of this room right um, if I'm off by one meter, if I have, you know, if I'm 20 plus or minus one meter, I'm off by a lot, right? I, I'm, I'm off by 5%. That's quite large. If you're building a house, you, you don't want to be off by this much, right? Um, and this is a lot different than, let's say, if we measure a kilometer, right? A thousand meters. Off by one meter, this is a very good measurement, right? We're only off by one meter. You know, that's 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 point uh one percent, right? So it's not actually always good to think about uh uncertainties in these absolute in these uh um absolute numbers, it's better to think of it in terms of percentages. So in terms of percentage, all right, in this case, we would have to turn this into a percentage, we just take the uncertainty and we divide it by uh, and we divide it by the actual measurements. This really gives us a, uh, uh, quantifies how accurate our measurement is. So for, for this case, the uncertainty is 0 0.05 divided by this. And can somebody do the cut? Oh, I can do it real quick. Um, so 
So this is equal to point zero five six, all right, which will round up to six. All right. So in terms of percentage, we have to multiply this by 100. So our percent is equal to this number times 100, right? And this gives us a percentage. And it comes out to be 0 0.06 percent. Right. Now, Now there's two types of uh, ways we describe how close we are to the actual number. There's two, two words that we use. We use accuracy and precision, and they mean two different things. Um, so um, does anybody know the difference to it? Um, if you want to answer either through the chat or. Yeah. Um, you know. So I think accuracy refers to like the, the, the like the how, how close you are to the actual number and precision is how repeatable the result is? Yes, is exactly, right? exactly. So a good way of putting it is if you have a bullseye, right? If I hit the center or I'm close to the center on all my uh, shots at the target, right? I'm accurate. It's very close to where I was aiming, right? But this may not be precise. precise is how repeatable the measurement or or uh, whatever action you're doing is, right? So if if I was if I had a very high precision, maybe it'll look like this, where all, all my all my shots at the target land in a small location. In, in this case, very close. It may not be as accurate as. Uh, um, what I what I shot the first time, what I just showed, but it's more precise. Right. So precision is is um, a measure of the uh, of how off you of the range of your measurements that you get in, and the precision is how close you are to the to the actual value that you're measuring. Right. So. So here, if we took the uncertainty, the, the necessarily there could be uh, less uncertainty with this measurement, um, even though you're off from, from being accurate, right? If I, had, if I had my target centered around here and I averaged the positions, it would be pretty close to the center, right? But the uncertainty would be very large, right? Because they're spread out over a wide, wide area. So, and the statistical methods that you use to actually get the uncertainty in this case. Um, sometimes uh, you take the range um, and you just use that, you know, you just use, you know, the furthest points that you have as the uncertainty. Depends on the situation and uh, on how accurate you need the uncertainty to be. Um, I don't want to go too much into uncertainty. Uh, since this is a summer course, I'd rather there's more important things to do that I feel like than uncertainty, but it's definitely very important in, in, uh, in measurements. So if, if you're uh, becoming an engineer, if, you, if, you, if you're majoring in engineering or, or, uh, or some, uh, uh, some other science, it's important that you know how to do uh, uncertainty. Usually, uh, we'll do it in the lab. Um, now, but um, again, this is a summer course, and this is so much material that we should cover that um, I'll leave this to uh, yourself to uh, look up the methods for applying uncertainty. Usually, they're given in, uh, 
more advanced levels of the coursework. Um, but generally, if you just uh, use um, uh, uh, usually use the lowest significant figure as uh, as your uncertainty, that's pretty good. Um, and this is not a lab course, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, so, next I want to go into uh, units and standards and uh, um, standard uh, um, unit system that we use, the SI system. Standard International. Um, so we work, uh, as scientists, we work in the system of uh, SI units. Um, and this was developed at the late 1800s because uh, people would use published results in different unit system, uh, uh, units. And uh, it's very hard for scientists to read this. So they simplified it to the SI system, which is very easy to use, and it works in multiples of 10. Um, so the way it works is that uh, when you have multiples of 10, you add a different value. Let me share my screen for this part. Okay. So over here, you have the different number systems so instead of writing uh 10 to to the whatever power to whatever specified power we use these letters right so uh like we use millimeters to measure small distances that's a, a thousand times less than um a meter And then if we could go up to large distances. I'm sure you've heard of gigabytes. That's a billion bytes or a billion units of memory for your computer or gigahertz. That's a billion, uh, uh, that, that's a, um, a frequency of, of, a, thousand, of uh, a billion hertz. So we use these uh, letters and, and, and um, these prefixes to describe these units. Um, now these are for, uh, this is, so, um, this is for everything above zero over here and everything below. So milli, micro, nano, and use this table to, uh, memorize this table and abbreviations. You will need it. Um, definitely. And the units, I mean, we could just do here is based on, uh, so all these quantities that you have here, like um, coulombs or amperes, you know, um, or newtons force um, or joules, it's all based off of uh, these basic uh, standards of measurement. Length, time, mass is the basic units, right? And originally, these units were, were so um, as scientists, we need a fixed length. How long is a meter, is what we call a meter, right? We need to define it for everybody to, to have a more precise measurement basis, right? A unit meter. And the way we, uh, we ended up describing them, instead of having this golden meter stick that everybody bases their meter off of, because that only has a certain amount of uncertainty, even when you go down to the micro scale, when does the meter stick start? start you know it could be jagged right so you can't really use that to measure millimeters right every copy of that golden meter stick will be off by a few micrometers a 10 to the minus six meters right so what we use instead is more precise uh, uh definition so the length is defined as how far the speed of uh, the, the light travels in one um in uh, this amount of time, one over uh, roughly three to the eighth power of a second. So, so um, uh, almost a billionth of a second, right? 
So that's how we define a meter, how far light travels in this uh, small increment of time. And the reason why we use it is because we can measure this very precisely. And we know the speed of light extremely precise. Uh, so th this is the best measurement for our life. And anybody in the world could use it and, 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 and actually determine how long a meter is based on this measurement. If, if I give you a laser and, and some other gadgets. Time is defined as um, in, in the seconds. So seconds is the standard unit. And then it's a little bit different in the SI unit system and everything else. It doesn't work in increments of 10. We go to minutes, right? And then hours and then days. So it doesn't work in increments of 10. You have to memorize these uh, conversion factors, which we'll go into later. But how we measure time is by uh, uh, the transition of a cesium atom. You heard of an atomic clock. This is where it comes from. Um, we can measure, so, these cesium atoms emit light at a very well-defined um, uh, frequency, and which means that the period of it, we'll, we'll go into, don't worry about what frequency and period means, we'll go into it later in the semester. But what, what it means, the period is the amount of time for it before it repeats um, a cycle, uh, before it repeats whatever process it's doing. So, um, when you have something that, that uh, repeats its motion, like a pendulum, you refer to the period as how long it goes back to the starting point, right? So in this case, uh, how long does the CZ atom to take to do uh, uh, 9 billion, roughly 9 billion periods? So uh, it, we define it within uh, picoseconds. This is extremely, extremely important for, for society that we, we define time so well. Um, to sync up, the internet would not work otherwise, actually, because um, uh, time can change whether you're in space or on Earth because of, uh, of uh, general relativity. And we need these special atomic clocks to always sync up, to uh, sync the time to satellites and to other clocks around the world so that we could send data back and forth. This is a limiting factor. This could be a limiting factor with how fast we can send data back and forth because we need, need to uh, time tag it for uh, different processes. And then the other measurement is mass. Now, mass was uh, the least well defined. It was actually defined by this um, um, block. It's, it was in, it's, it's interesting. There was a video on it uh, recently. Um, um, but it, there was this. Um, um, platinum iridium cylinder that they had in Paris. And it was defined as one kilogram. And then let's say the United States was given a, a copy of it. They measured the weight, they see the weight, and then they, okay, this is one kilogram. Use this for all your experiments, right? Um, it recently, the, the, it was found that over time, these weights would diverge. So where did this material go? Nobody knows. This is a stable material. And, and they found that these, these masses change over time. They, there's no explanation on, on why. So they redefined it. Um, uh, they redefined it by the number of atoms in a, a given amount, a, a number of atoms, uh, a specified number of atoms, the weight of, um, um, so um, if you give a certain number of atoms of, uh, Silicon, how much does that weigh? And they define that as the kilogram. Um, there's another way that they do it. I don't, uh, I can't recall it right now. But so it, this is very important for our precision on uh, for our measurements throughout um, science. And th these are the three standard uh, measurements that we base all our units off of, whether it's energy or force or uh, power. Um, anything, uh, you know, or anything like electricity. Um, there's other systems. Um, uh, the standard system is MKS, kilometer, kilogram, second. So these are the basic units. So whenever you do an equation, you always want to use kilograms, meters, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, meters, kilograms, and seconds. You always do the formulas with uh, these units. You always have to convert it to this 
um, amount. We don't work with grams, we work with kilograms. Um, so when you calculate in force, which we'll say you, you always use kilograms. There's all other units, uh, there's a, a, um, um, a CGS system, um, which is a part of the metric system, but they use uh, uh, centimeters, grams, and, and, and seconds. So, but it's part of the metric system where you have these multiples of 10 and they use the same quantities. Now there's a base quantity and derived quantities. Um, a base quantity is like uh, the three that I said above and a derived quantity is like uh, um, uh, force, which is measured in Newtons. Now, like a derived quantity is this. So, which we'll go into soon. So, force is given in terms of Newtons or N. It's, we just use N. And what N is equal to is it's equal to kilograms times meters over seconds squared. So this is the unit. This is these are the base units of uh, of this derived unit. So instead of writing this all the time, we just write newtons, right? So uh, th this is a derived quantity. We, we we could we could put it down into base units, uh, and then these are well defined, like I said earlier. Um, Now, um, so that, that's basically it for the units. Now, let me talk about converting units real quickly. So let's say if we go from one unit to, to another, Let, let's say if I measure something in inches, we have to do this a lot in, in America because everything is run on inches. And a lot of people uh, say from other countries, oh, how can we still on inches? That doesn't make any sense. There's a reason for it. The reason why we're, we're on the English system is because our manufacturing base was built on the English system and it will cost, they, they, they did a study in the 1970s that it would cost way too much money for the industry to switch over to metric units. So after World War II, um, we, we, we were all, uh, the United States was the only country left with the manufacturing base and everything was based on this older system and we still had all this manufacturing uh, with this older system and um, there's too much momentum built up in this older system that it wasn't worth the cost to switch over to the metric system uh, while you know every uh, the rest of the world was able to rebuild and use a better system um, and uh, with, with globalization um, we're switching over as well so um, that's basically the story behind it there's no accidents um, so let's say if we convert one inch, so one inch, well, we write it like this, is equal to 2.54 centimeters, right? So we have our units here, and then, so our conversion factor is, we'll write it down. What we do is use a little trick, so we kind of, we kind of treat these dimensions, these number, these dimensions almost like numbers where we can move them around. So we divide one inch over here, and we divide one inch over here, right? And on this side, what we say is we're left with one, right? Now this is a lot different than saying we have one inch. Yes, the number is the same, but this is unit list. There's no units associated with this because we divided out. We divided out the units. We treat in the units as if they are um, uh, almost like numbers. We divide out the units, and then we have it over here. We have one. Uh, we have two point five four divided by one. So we can get rid of the one, and we're left with one is equal to. Two point five four centimeters per inch. So for each inch, there's two point five four uh, centimeters. So when I see this, I say 
centimeters per, this division sign is per inch, right? So for each inch, there's 2.54 centimeters, right? And what this allows me to do, because this is equal, what we say is equal to one, I can multiply any quantity of inches by this, and we can, I can multiply any quantity by this number, and it'll remain the same. It's a little mathematical trick, right? Um, you use this in, uh, in uh, with uh, fractions all the time, right? If you want to um, find the, the lowest common denominator, you multiply each side by uh, a ratio of one, and you get it that way. So let's say if, if I'm given 101 inches, right? I want it in centimeters. So all I do is that 101 inches is equal to 101 inches times one. All right? And then I transfer, I substitute this one for this conversion factor. 2.54 centimeters per inch. Now, all I have to do is uh, multiply this together, right? And this is equal to 256, right, point five four. So, and then what we do is we multiply the units together. And here, when you multiply it, because this is divided, we'll have inches over inches, so they cancel each other out, and we're left with 2.5 centimeters. So 101 inches is equal to this amount of centimeters. Now, if we want to go back, because, let me erase this. Because this is equal to one, we could just invert this. So this is also equal to one. You see that? Because one over one is one, of course. So now if we want to go back to, to centimeters, so if we're given this amount of centimeters, we want it in inches, we just multiply this now by one. Right. And then we could plug this in over here. And Now we look at the division, the centimeters cross out with centimeters, and we're left with inches. That's good. And then we, when, we, when we divide it by this number, obviously we'll get back this equals 101 inches. This is how we convert units, right? And then you'll do this a lot with time. Let's say if you want to go from seconds to, to so 200 seconds, we want it in days. Right. So let's say if we do this, 200 seconds. So we first.